Hello, welcome to MyOtherProfessor.com. I'm Zaina, and today we are going to discuss eukaryotes. But we're going to look at the major structures and organelles. Okay, so the outline of topics. First, we will discuss the cell wall and the cytoskeleton, then some movement within the cell um, used by flagella and cilia. We'll look at the plasma membrane and then take a look at the different organelles. So the list, endoplasmic reticulum, the nucleus, Golgi apparatus, different vesicles, the mitochondria, and chloroplasts. Um, as we discussed in previous lecture, cell walls are not found in animal cells. They are found in plant cells. You can also find them in fungi and some protists. So the composition of cell walls in, in plant cells are cellulose and perhaps some chitin. So remember, this is different from bacteria, and bacteria are composed of polysaccharides and proteins. So this is one major difference between the two cell walls, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Okay, the cytoskeleton. Um, the cytoskeleton is in the cytoplasm, and it helps retain, retain the shape of the cell. It's sort of like the bones of the cell, if you look at it that way. The fibers are what hold it together, and they're formed through polymerization. And this is an identical unit of protein assembled into one long chain. So there are three main filaments. The first is actin. So the actin filaments are responsible for more of the cellular movement, such as contracting, crawling, pinching, sometimes forming different cellular extensions. And the microtubules are a lot longer and hollow than the actin, and they're also stiffer. So these are responsible additionally to cellular movement, as with actin, but they're actually, um, they move the material within the cell. And the final filament is the intermediate filament, and these are a little bit larger than actin, a little bit smaller than microtubules. They're very durable, and um, sometimes you may find them in, for example, neural filaments. They're found in nerve cells or keratin, which are found in the cell lining of organs and body cavities. Okay. So cell movement really is found with actin, microtubules, interfilament tubules. This is responsible for all the cell movement. So we also have flagella in the eukaryotic cells. However, the flagella in eukaryotes looks a lot different than in prokaryotes. It has a 9 plus 2 structure to it. So this means that there are nine microtubules, which surrounds two central um, microtubules. And then these, this tube is inserted into a basal body, which projects inward into the cell. So there's also cilia, which has the same basic structure as the flagella. However, they are a lot shorter and found in larger groups. Okay. There's also additional types of cellular movement. There are cytopods, which is sort of like a false foot for the eukaryote. It helps it crawl. It does this through the cell's uh, gel soul state, which is part of the cytoplasm. It kind of oozes in a different direction, but then it stays in the plasma membrane. So it extends, then the cytopod extends to the, cell, the gel state, and it makes actin filaments to help it move. And then actin filaments can be used by muscle cells to contract their cytoskeletons. And we also have different intracellular molecular motors. Uh, this can be used for, for very fast transport throughout the cytoplasm. So for example, first a vesicle or an organelle is needed to be transported. And then we have the motor molecule providing the energy. The connector molecule connects the vesicle to the motor molecule. And then we have the microtubule is what the organelle is going to be riding on. So this is a very brief description of what actually occurs. It's a pretty complex uh, procedure. Okay, so this next slide, we're gonna look at a picture of the phospholipid bilayer. And we're gonna go into this again in another lecture. It's a very complex membrane, but 
It's found in all living cells and essentially it separates the inside from the outside of the cell. Okay, so now on to the organelles. The first organelle we'll discuss is the endoplasmic reticulum. So this is made of many folds. It sort of compartmentalizes the cell. So it's a large internal membrane. Uh, it has a cisternal space as well as a cytosol. And the cisternal space is sort of the inner region of the endoplasmic reticulum and the region exterior is the cytosol. There are two main different types, or there are two types of the endoplasmic reticulum. There's the rough ER, and this deals with protein synthesis. It has many ribosomes on it, and these proteins are exported outside of the cell. And then there's also signal sequences that directs the proteins to their appropriate designation. And the next the next um, endoplasmic reticulum is the smooth ER. It has very few ribosomes, but there are many enzymes embedded throughout the membrane, and this helps to catalyze the synthesis of the different carbohydrates and lipids within the cell. So let's briefly look at the ribosomes. So as we said before, these synthesize proteins, and their structure, it has two subunits, and to make these proteins, the ribosomes attach to an mRNA, which is a transcribed copy of DNA. And then this information is used to use as directions to synthesize the specific proteins. So one of the subunits on the ribosome is a bit larger and the other is a bit smaller. And they are, they are composed in the nucleolus. Okay, so the nucleus, this is where the cell's hereditary information is contained. It consists of a nuclear envelope. It encases it, and this is two phospholipid bilayers, and there are also nuclear pores. And these nuclear pores are scattered throughout the nuclear envelope, and they're filled with proteins, which allow certain molecules to pass in and out of the nucleus. And then we also have chromosomes. These. Uh, these are many sections of nucleosomes. So nucleosomes, they have the DNA, the central histosome, and the spacer histone. So the DNA is wrapped around the central histone, and then there are different spacer histones to kind of give a gap, and then they're all bundled together, and that makes the, nu the chromosome. So this allows the uh, hereditary information in the cell to be very condensed, whereas Remember in the previous lecture, we said that the DNA in prokaryotes is just a circle. It can't condense very well. 